Okay, uh, this video is to give you more examples of Fourier series. I'll start with a function that's odd. My odd function means that the, on the left side of zero, I get the negative of what I have on the right side of zero. f at minus x is minus f of x. And it's the sine function that's odd. The cosine function is even, and we will have no cosines here. All the integrals that involve cosines will tell us zero for the coefficients a n. What we'll get is the, co the b coefficients, the sine functions. OK, and so you see that I chose a simple odd function, minus 1 or 1, which would give a square wave if I keep, if I continue it on. It will go down, up, down, up in a square wave pattern. OK, and I'm going to express that as a combination of sine functions, smooth waves. And here was the formula from last time for the coefficients b, k, except I have now, I'm only integrating over half, over the, over the 0 to pi part of the interval, so I, and I double it. So, uh, with, so that's an odd function, that's an odd function. When I multiply them, I have an even function, and the integral from minus pi to 0 is just the same as the integral from 0 to pi. So I'll do what, only 0 to pi and, and multiply by 2. OK, but my function on 0 to pi is 1. My, my nice square wave is just plus 1 there. So I'm just integrating sine kx dx. We can do this. It's minus cosine kx divided by k, right? That's the integral with the 2 over pi factor. Now I have to put in pi and 0 and put in the limits of integration and get the answer. OK, so what do I get? I get 2 over pi. For k equal 1, I think I get, um, so k is 1, the denominator will be 1, and I think the numerator is 2. Yes. When k is 0, I get, yeah, you, you, when k is 1, I get 2. When k is 2, so this is 4 over pi, I figured out, as the first coefficient. The coefficient b1 is 4 over pi. The coefficient b2, now if I take k equal to 2, I have a 2 down below, but above I have a 0, because the cosine of 2 pi is the same as the co cosine of 0. When I subtract, I get nothing, so that's 0. OK? Now I go to k equal 3. So the k equal 3 will come down here. And now when k is 3, it turns out I get, they, they don't cancel, they reinforce, I get another 2. Good if you do these. And when k is 4, I get a 0 again. You see the pattern? The pattern for the integrals is, the k is going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The, this part gives me a 2 or a 0 or a 2 or a 0 in order. If you check that, you'll get it. OK, so I see that now for this function, which is better than the delta function, although it's not, it's not very smooth, it has jumps. It's a jump function, a step function. Uh, I see some decay, some slow decay in the Fourier coefficients. There's a, this, this, this uh, factor k is growing, so the, the numbers are going to zero, but not very fast. Not very fast, because my function is not very smooth. OK, so that's, now you see the, so if I use those numbers, I'm saying that the square wave, this, this function, the, the minus 1 to 1 function, is equal to, let's see, I might as well take that 4 over pi times 1, so that's 1 sine x, 
zero sine two x's, then two, uh, four over pi sine three x's, but with this guy there's a three, zero sine four x's, sine five x comes in over five, and so on. That's a kind of nice example. It, it turns out that, that we have just the odd frequencies, one, three, five, in the square wave. And they're multiplied by uh, four over pi, and they're divided by the frequency, so that's the decay. All right, there's an odd function. Let me, uh, why don't I integrate that function? If I want to get an even function, to show you an even example, I'll just integrate that square wave. What, when I integrate that square wave, it'll be even. Maybe I'll start the integral at zero, then it goes up at one. Okay, and here the integral is negative, so it's coming down. So you see my, it's a, what am I going to call this function? Sort of a repeating ramp function. It's a ramp down and then up, down and then up. But of course, from minus pi to pi, that's where I'm looking. I'm looking between minus pi and pi. And my, I see that function as even. And what does even mean? That means that my function at minus, there's minus x, is the same as the value at x. And what that means for a Fourier series is cosine. Even functions only have cosine terms. And of course, since I'm just integrating, I might as well just integrate that series. So this is this ramp, this repeating ramp function is going to be 4 over pi. I could figure out the cosine coefficients, the a's, patiently. But why should I do that when I can just integrate? So I'll have the integral of, so the integral of sine x will be minus, is the integral of sine x is minus cosine x, so I'll put the minus there, cosine x over 1, I guess. Now what's the integral of this? The integral of sine 3x is a cosine 3x over 3, and there's another 3, and there's a minus sign, so I've, which I've got. So I think it's cosine of 3x over 3 squared, because I have one 3 there, and I get another 3 from the integration. And similarly here, when I integrate sine 5x, I get cos 5x with a 5, and then I already had one 5, so 5 squared. So there you go. Well, ha! Huh, there's something in freshman calculus which I totally forgot. The constant term. So there is a constant term, the average value, the a0. I've only found the a1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I haven't found the a0, and that would be the average of that. I don't know, what's the average of this function? It starts, it goes from 0 up to pi, and it seems like it's pretty, I didn't draw it well, but halfway, I think probably its average is about pi over 2, right? Let's, let's hope that's right. OK, so let me sneak in the constant term here. The ramp is, I think I have the constant term is pi over 2. That's the average value. It would come from the formula. And those, well, what do you see now? That's the other example I wanted you to see. You see a faster drop off, 1, 9, 25, 49, whatever. It's dropping off with k squared. And the reason it drops off faster than this one is that uh, it's smoother. This function has corners. This function has jumps. So a jump is one level more rough, more, more noisy than a, than a ramp function. The smoother function has faster decay. Smooth, let me write those words. Smooth function connects with faster 
decay. Faster drop off of the Fourier coefficient. It means that the Fourier series is much more useful. Fourier series is really terrific for functions that are smooth, because then you only need to keep a few terms. For functions that, are, that have jumps or delta functions, you have to keep many, many terms, and the Fourier series calculation is much more difficult. OK, so that's the, that's the second example. Uh, Let's see, what, what uh, more shall I say? Uh, we learned something about integrating and taking the derivative, so let me f end with just two basic rules. Two basic rules. So the rule for derivatives. What's the Fourier series of df dx? And the second will be the rule for shifts. What's the Fourier series for f of x minus a shift? You, you know that, that when I change x to x minus d, all that does is shift the graph by a distance d. That should do something nice to its Fourier coefficients. So I'm starting with, oh, I haven't given you any practice with the complex case, this would be a good time. Suppose start is f of x equals the sum of ck, the complex coefficient, e to the i k x, the complex exponential. And you remember that sum went from minus infinity to infinity. OK, so I have a Fourier series. I'm imagining I know the coefficients, and I want to say, what happens if I take the derivative? Well, just take the derivative. You'll have the sum of the derivative brings down a factor i k. So that's the rule, simple but important. That's why Fourier series is so great because it, you have orthogonality, and then you have this simple rule with derivatives. You just, it just brings a factor i k, so the derivative makes your function noisier, and you have larger uh, coefficients. And if I do f of x minus d, so I'll change x to x minus d, so I'll see the sum of c k e to the i k x, e to the minus i k d, right? I've, I've put in x minus d instead of x. And here I see that the Fourier coefficient for a shifted function, so this the c k was the Fourier coefficient for f. When I shift f, it multiplies that coefficient by uh, a phase change. The magnitude stayed the same because that's a number, everybody recognizes that as a number of magnitude 1 and just has a phase shift. OK, those are two good rules that show why you can use Fourier series in differential equations and in difference equations. Thank you.